Hey, assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to our uh, webinar for in English article writing with Ms. Fama Sayyid. And today she will be guiding you how to write the article uh, for English O-Levels and IGCSE. Over to you, Ms. Fama. Now, magazine article, what I know of my, in my teaching experience is the hardest and most challenging. And before I actually start doing that, discussing magazine article, its conventions and features. What I would like to share is or discuss is the difference between CAI and the IGCSE syllabus, English syllabus. And here's the difference. Now, first of all, you need to just see, you know, most uh, students are very result oriented. Of course, there's pressure of the parents. And rightly so, you have your futures at stake. So over here, where 0500 is concerned, by which I mean your IGCSE English, you have grades going from, you know, A star to the grade G. So you have this leverage of passing, you know, even at 20 or 29%, which is quite a lot. Uh, but still, I would advise you not to, if you you know, uh, work hard on this paper because this is just like common sense and just a few writing skills and reading skills which you brush up on and you can get a good grade here. On the other hand, if you look at uh, double one, two, three, you have grades ranging from A star. Uh, and of course, the percentage over here will differ. Please keep that in mind according to the student's results. Uh, that year or for that batch, it just goes up till E and generally like, you know, it's just still 40% or so. So uh, we don't have that many grades in double one, two, three. Then we go on to uh, what other benefits are there of uh, IGCSE. Of course, you can have a combination of over 70 subjects. Uh, if you choose IGCSE syllabi, but in double one, two, three, you have a limited range. There are fewer courses options here. And of course, then we have, it's like uh, one, one, two, three has one advantage that it uh, is kind of modified according to our local needs. So it's slightly, some papers are slightly easier. So you have that one advantage. On the other hand, we have the 0500 where, you know, uh, students have, it really prepares you for employment abroad or universe, foreign universities as well. And then beside that, the assessment techniques over there, their oral as well as uh, the writing skills. And here in double one, two, three, Sometimes students don't feel too comfortable in giving an English speaking test. The English spoken component is a little hard. So in this one, you just limit it to the usual routine, uh, reading and writing papers. So I hope the difference is cleared up a bit and it will help you in choosing because I think it should be a well-informed choice. Okay, uh, Ms. Now, coming to I have a question. So, like, yes. what would you recommend uh, that mostly students in uh, Pakistan or like in schools uh, at uh, in our city? So, like, how what would be your advice in like choosing these two? If their school is offering both of them and they have a choice to pick, so which one do you think is more beneficial for them? Uh, I personally think, Miss Ima, for right now, they're equally valid, even abroad. Okay. So why not choose the easier option? But even that, in that certain subjects like science subjects that are easier in IGCSE. Yet the English is a really challenging uh, paper. Why? Because you know the text is really for uh, native speakers, first language usage. So that is hard. So maybe they can have a combination. And I think that requirement is already understood by certain schools. So I know like, uh, let's say a well-known school like LGS, they're offering uh, CAI O-levels and IGCSE, uh, IGCSE, sorry, to their students. And there is, if you know of OPF, LGS, Johartown Girls Branch, they actually 
or also just uh, they're not giving an option in English. They're doing O level English, but IGC, SC of other subjects. So you understand we can do that too. I mean, students can do that. So their results is like outstanding and it's easy for them to get admissions abroad. Okay. So it's primarily it's depending on the school that, you know, what they're offering. But if they have a choice, they should go for the easier one uh, so that, you know, like their grade is not impacted uh, by that because internationally for the universities, both of them have equal weighted. So it's not like you're getting a leverage by doing one over the other. Yeah, you've nailed it. Yes, that is okay. what I mean. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, the task that we are actually going to discuss here, that's magazine article. Now, why did I choose magazine article? Because it is relevant to both O-levels and IGCSC. Now, ever since they have kind of revamped the O-level English language paper, the paper two, which is your now your writing paper in O-levels, it is exactly the same as IGCSC. All differences have been eliminated, okay? There are none now. Only thing is probably the mark weightage over there, but in the end, the percentage is going to remain the same. Now, this is for primarily, you know, for IGCSE students here. So in for IGCSE students, magazine article is going to come in both the papers. It will come in the comprehension one, which is paper one. It's the it's a it's going to be a 25 mark question. Then in paper two, for IGC SC English paper, it's going to be a 40 mark question. So you can understand that why it is so important. And of course, you never have a choice where directed writing or extended task questions are concerned. So again, my advice to all students here would be that they should uh, be well versed in writing it and understanding its stone register and all of it. Okay, now before I go on and move on to the magazine article, I know several teachers actually, you know, keep saying in the class, you know, get the right tone, get the, uh, read what the purpose of the task is, of the text is, but how many of you actually understand what it means, what that term means? Because recently I was just, asking my class and none of them could actually answer. So I'll just quickly go over it before we discuss the tone, purpose and audience. By tone, it's, I'm sure if you try hard, it would be the voice of the text, whether it is humorous, it is serious and accordingly you would be choosing your vocabulary, right? Uh, it will be semi-formal if it's a humorous tone, uh, if you're trying to create humor, and if it's a really serious topic, then of course, it will be a formal register. Purpose, of course, it could be to argue, to persuade the audience, or maybe to entertain. All right. Now, as you can see over here, entertain. Of course, if you are writing a text to entertain, then you should be adding rhetorical questions over there to engage the reader. You need to add humor. Maybe you just including examples from uh, real life about Britney Spears and all that. And I am going to show you some samples as well. So you'd understand how to, you know, add humor there. Then argue, of course, argue is by adding statistics. You have facts here, and then you can build your logical argument. But what is the difference between arguing and persuading? Of course, in persuading, you would be including emotive appeal. For example, if you're mentioning the massive slaughter of sharks, you're just going to... Okay, can I... Uh, yeah. So you're just going to include emotive appeal over there. For example, you're talking about slaughter of sharks, so you would uh, use the word victims for them, okay? That will be, you know, emotional, evoke an emotional response from your reader. And then we have, let's, that is to do with the purpose now of the magazine article. And now just keep in mind that it is just not one thing that you keep, you know, you will do. Uh, meaning that you're just not going to entertain. You will be probably arguing and 
part of the article where you're giving statistics and you're giving facts as well. And of course, the emotive appeal. So it's a combination, a mixture of all three for the magazine article. And it is much harder because you need to re give real careful thought to it, how you uh, plan, how you're going to express your, present your points, your arguments. Now, audience, of course, if it's an adult audience, I'm sure your teachers in the English class have told you many times that uh, you need to use a formal register. And of course, a good example of formal register would be don't say uh, buying, that it should be purchasing. So all those, you know, difficult, complex words, you should be using them. If you're writing for an tone over here, of course, how do you get the tone right? It would be your varied sentence structure, which I already said, the rhetorical, uh, you know, rhetorical questions should be there. You should be adding uh, humor by maybe giving your real life experiences, which are actually funny, but of course should be relevant to the topic. Not that you just continue to add jokes. Uh, chatty writing style, uh, something like, ah, oh, yes, this would be splendid. Or besides this, so, so chatting writing style where you're actually directly addressing the reader. Humorous voice, we've already discussed, rhetorical question and precise vocabulary for effect. Many times students, what they actually do is that to impress the reader, they will use irrelevant vocabulary out of context. And instead of gaining marks, they actually lose. All right, take sample one. Now. now, if you look at this, keeping in mind all the features that I had told you, which were like chatty style, rhetorical questions, and humorous voice, which you need, which is like a distinctive, a key feature of magazine article. Which sample do you people feel would be a magazine article. Now here in this one, US shark attacks increase worldwide after three years of decline with 64% of bites reported in the US. And then we have shark attacks increased around the world in 2021 following three consecutive years of decline. The beach closures in 2020 caused by the COVID-19 pandemic would make the numbers seem more dramatic than they are. Officials said Monday. The US once again reported the most attacks in Florida accounted for nearly 40% of unprovoked bites worldwide. Now keep in mind when you're reading it, this is, this is all dry facts, right? So let's move on to the next. Now, this one is my special favorite. Please ignore that picture over there. And let's focus on this. Like, you know, I can't find any books on raising teenagers I have looked in medical lifestyle and self-help so try the horror section so no insult meant but yeah I just thought it would be nice to add some comic relief in an otherwise very serious subject okay now in this one I know sharks aren't what everyone is running out to see and I get it the entertainment industry and the media have done a really, really good job of making us all think that these predators are really bloodthirsty beings. Just waiting for us to deliver ourselves on a silver platter in the ocean. 